What's going on everyone, it's Justin here and welcome to another episode of my dream condo renovation series. A condo that I purchased about a year ago and it's underwent a huge renovation, taking everything out and bringing together all my past projects when it comes to tech, design, functionality, and just all the elements of putting together a custom condo build. So in the past episodes, we talked about the electrical setup, tearing down all the walls, and also the flooring, some of the material choices. But in this episode, we're starting to move into the millwork, which includes the living room and the kitchen. And I wanna give a huge thanks to Somfy for sponsoring a portion of this video. The living room is one of the areas that I'm most excited about because it's one of the biggest transformations of this space. From what was before a 55 inch TV, I ended up flattening out that entire wall and now there's 14 feet to work with when it comes to fitting that 85 inch TV behind me, some custom millwork, and also a stone fireplace on one side that is a little bit of a technological thing that I haven't really seen too much. In the full reveal video, I'll show you guys the final result and everything in action and more of like a lifestyle film. But in this video, we're getting into the technical details and design details of what came together in building what I would call the ultimate living room. It really is a centerpiece of this place and I wanted to focus a lot on it and I'm honestly really happy with the end result. The next videos to expect are also the kitchen installation and bathroom, some of the other miscellaneous finishes, the decor, as well as the outdoor terrace, which I'm really excited about before showing you guys the final reveal now that the place is done. I've recorded a whole bunch of archive in the past year of the entire process and just want to sit down and give you guys a story of each one. If you guys like to win one of my favorite accessories for a living room though, which is a set of LED lights for the back of your TV that reacts to what is on the screen, just go ahead and subscribe to the channel, drop a like on this video and leave a comment down below with your Instagram username and I'll be contacting a winner directly in two weeks. So when it comes to the design, this living room itself went through I'd say 10 different versions. In the beginning, there were just a few that I really didn't like, and then we started to get a little bit closer, but even from there, there's always fine tuning to be done when it comes to fitting your technology, different fixtures, functional elements such as cabinets, and also small optimizations that not only tie in with the kitchen, which is right here, but also make good use of the space while keeping it nice and open. As I said before, the TV wall was really small and there was a lot of room on each side, but to flatten out that wall and build a massive TV wall, you have to keep a few things in mind. It's the first thing that you see when you walk into the unit from the side. And so trying to integrate the 85 inch TV, which for a condo is usually pretty large, which also included a large receiver for the ceiling speakers, as well as a fireplace, is what we've kind of bounced around on. With Thomas and & Birch and Elmwood cabinets, we went through all of these different versions of millwork on one side, open concept shelving on both sides, but at the same time, also trying to implement some stone, hidden storage, and the tech elements that run the entire place. On top of that, the fireplace was another very interesting thing. Instead of going with an electrical fireplace, I actually went with a vapor fireplace, and this is like a new technology that uses water vapor and steam with a light to give the realistic flame effect. And you'll notice that the end result of all these iterations is the same walnut finish that you find in the kitchen, but instead of going with the bevel on the side, I went with a flat finish and the L-shaped of the open concept cabinets and the storage on the front give it a lot of functional space while also having some room for decor. And next to that, the stone is just like a seamless and minimalist way to close off the entire design. And instead of going with the marble finish that you find in the kitchen, I just decided not to overwhelm it because obviously the TV is already a very large piece. Originally, I was also kind of back and forth on what to do with the wall behind the TV. It was either gonna be a large format stone in a black finish, painted MDF, or tile. And the first choice was just to go with painted black MDF. And it just really didn't look complete. There was something wrong with it. And so at the last stage of the project, I decided to go ahead and add tile to the back wall. And these are individual 12 by three pieces that have been placed on the wall. And it was actually done relatively quickly. And although I was kind of concerned about just how big of an impact it would make to the space, maybe being too distracting or too busy on a wall like that, I actually think it complements the plainness of a large TV very nicely. And honestly, it's one of my favorite things that I've done to the unit, but I definitely was concerned when doing it because I didn't consult with anybody. I wasn't sure if it was breaking any interior design rules. I wasn't sure if it was too overwhelming. And with tile, there really isn't any turning back. 
But at the end of the day, it made sense to give it that vertical element to the top, but also allow the light to just bounce off it at different times of day without showing imperfections that like a smooth surface such as paint or large format tile would, even down to like dust and fingerprints. The slats just really look uniform and the installer did an excellent job on that. Some of the other areas of stone though were made out of porcelain and I wanted to have open concept cabinets on all of the actual solid elements. Instead of just having a large fireplace mantle or a like closed off side or brick over there, I wanted to be able to have IO with ventilation and fans built in, as well as storage on the side of the fireplace mantle that is hidden, but also has room for stuff like toilet paper and home supplies, because with any condo, even being a pretty decent sized one, it is always nice to optimize your storage and try to hide as many things away as possible. One of the things about this unit that's a little bit different from my previous unit is that even though it is a bigger unit at nearly 1500 square feet, it doesn't have the storage room that my previous unit had. And so having stuff like spare supplies and cleaning supplies and just like the boring stuff in a side cabinet that isn't accessed as much, in my opinion, was a pretty good decision. So when it comes to summing up the design of the media wall, the idea here was to have natural elements that contrast the flooring and tie into the kitchen, a lot of vertical lines through the matte black tile, and also some white stone that just give it like a bold connection to the rest of the place and the ceiling, because at the end of the day, the place is really bright. And with all this coming together, the way the light hits the room at different times of day, like right now, just highlights these very nicely. And I'm gonna talk more about the furniture choices in the full review. But now that we've talked about the design, let's go ahead and jump into the technology aspect and all the small details associated with the audio, the TV, and the setup arrangement with that, as well as how everything is installed into this media center to power the entire place when it comes to the internet, the sound, the game systems, and TV. So on the technology aspect of the living room, this is an area that I had a lot of fun picking out. The TV from the start was gonna be the Sony Mini LED flagship model because it is the brightest option. It has a lot of the great characteristics of an OLED TV by having the local dimming, for example, and the contrast levels, but it gives you the brightness that you need in a room like that. Having windows on both sides means that throughout the different times of day when you're watching TV, there is sun that is shining through the backside from behind you, and also through the end of the day, as the sun is going down, there's a pretty harsh level of sunlight coming through as well. So the TV looks absolutely amazing. I'm gonna talk more about this in the official living room tour, but it is actually wall mounted and behind it, there's also a set of Govi LED lights that have a camera that reacts to what is on the screen and displays a more immersive image onto the back wall itself. The reason why I chose this system over something like the Philips Hue is because the Philips Hue has a bypass box and the middleman box in a lot of cases I found had quite a bit of issues and some glitches here and there. And so I went with an external system that is completely separate from the TV and instead scans the screen and reacts to it. And I think it looks really good and it's actually a lot cheaper than the Philips Hue box. So if you guys wanna win one, that was a giveaway at the start of the video. The other most important aspect of technology though is the shades. The system that I've gone with is the Somfy, and it is just so easy to set up. The motors and everything work amazingly, and all these shades are able to be controlled with the touch or a remote, but I also have the app connected to it as well. So I've set up sequences that either go up and down based on the sunrise and sunset schedules, but in this case, I also have it set up to different ways of watching TV. So in certain times of day, I actually have the shades behind me go down to be able to block the direct sunlight hitting the TV. And in other times of day, say during sunset, I actually have both sides coming down to ensure that once again, the TV is not having a harsh sunlight hitting it directly. Having a smart system like this is great because you're able to use the shades when you need to, but also enjoy the view for most times of day. And typically I like to have all my shades up, but there's definitely scenarios where they need to come down. And when you're watching TV, it's very convenient to just be able to go on the app or go on the remote and have it changed instantly. So if you guys wanna go ahead and check out the Somfy system for yourself, there are just so many options, but a reliable system like that, that communicates with the remote and with the smartphone app with certain accessories is really important. And I wanna give a huge thanks to Somfy for sponsoring this video. As for the audio setup, the ceilings are being dropped about four inches. And so instead of adding just LED lights in that room where they didn't exist before, it was a perfect opportunity to set up kind of a 7.1 sound system. 
There's a soundbar at the front that is from Totem Acoustic. It already sounds really impressive on its own, but Sony's audio technology within their TVs is also the best in the industry. So if it didn't add any additional sound, it still would have been okay. But because the walls were all being opened, I figured having a soundbar and also four speakers in the ceiling is really good for music listening, but also like playing video games and watching TV to give you that full immersive experience. So it is a system that has all been custom set up with a Marantz receiver. And the Marantz receiver has also been custom calibrated to utilize a microphone that is included in the setup process that then calibrates the exact kind of tones and everything um, to be able to ensure you get the best experience possible. And there's also a small subwoofer that is hiding behind the couch just to give it that extra effect. Even when it's set to this maximum volume, because of the way it's set up, there has been no noise complaints from my neighbors or anything. And I think part of that is because it is a concrete building, but I've got to say, if you're thinking of dropping the ceiling in any space, you're able to set up a pretty inexpensive surround audio experience and you should definitely do it even in a condo. When it comes to the furniture in the living room, I'm gonna be talking more about this in the official tour, but I've gone with Rove Concepts, a very large couch that replicates the vertical lines in this place. This unit definitely doesn't have the highest ceilings, but by doing a lot of vertical things, it definitely gives that illusion. And I think this couch was just perfect. It's the same material as I had in my previous place because I really like the durability of it. And that kind of goes very well with the herringbone floors, the side table and the black marble table that contrasts the stone in the kitchen. But as I said, I'll talk a little bit more about the furniture in the actual living room reveal video where we just focus on the finished product. The biggest thing about this unit is just bringing all the ideas together. The materials, whether it is the wood, the stone, the white oak herringbone floors, there are certain elements at the start of the project that you just say you have to have. Bringing some pieces from my previous unit as well, but most importantly, having the decor to complement it and having the neutral palette while also having some decor to bring it to life, those were all things that were very important and there's definitely things that I've learned from previous projects. And so, I mean, with each project, you just continue to learn more in terms of the design. And I've got to say the kitchen and the living room are definitely the areas that I'm most proud of. But otherwise, thank you guys so much for watching this home renovation update. And as always, if you enjoyed it, make sure you go ahead and drop a like, subscribe to the channel. I'm so sorry it has taken so long. Typically with a series like this, I would cover it as the series goes and have more of like a vlog style. And I definitely prefer that. But this project just had a lot of different things and time holdups that ended up making that quite difficult. So sitting down and giving you guys kind of the information and things that I learned in a more refined way, I think is kind of the way we're going here. So I hope you guys enjoyed it. Thanks for joining this episode and I'll see you all in the next one.